Six months of negotiations, several last-minute deals in Congress have finally passed a $1.2 trillion spending package that keeps the government funded. Senate Majority Leader Democrat Chuck Schumer day. applauded the bill, saying it was, quote, no small feat. The package of bills includes funding for 2,000 new border control agents and additional detention beds and increased technology along the southern border. The bill also cuts funding to the State Department and foreign aid by roughly 6 percent. There is no funding for Israel, Ukraine or Taiwan. In the House, majority of Republicans voted against the bill and one member, conservative Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, began the process of calling for the ouster of House Speaker Mike Johnson, plus Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher from Wisconsin. Well, he's announced he's stepping down, creating an even thinner majority for the GOP. We want to welcome back on the Hill this Sunday morning Jeff Macy, he's the White House correspondent for Reuters, and Mitchell Miller, the senior uh, congressional correspondent for WTOP Radio. Good to see you both here, back at the table. Good to be with you. A lot to bite off here, fellas. All right. <laughs> yeah. So let's let, let's start backwards and let's start uh, on the hill. We seem to be in this endless pattern of you know chicken little government shutdowns, and then at the last minute, you know they are able to re resolve this. It doesn't seem like a good way to budget. It doesn't seem like good government. But we're in this pattern again and again. Mitchell, how close did it come to actually going off the cliff this time, or is this just theatrics we're watching? Well, I think a lot of it was theatrics. It don't, I don't think we came as close to the cliff as we've come before, but what's really interesting to me is if you go back to all the way to, I know it sounds like ancient history, Kevin McCarthy, remember him? Oh, he was the wow. House Speaker. Ancient. When he made this <laughs> deal last year, that it was all to avoid this omnibus at the end of the uh, holiday season, right? Essentially, the Republicans, in my view, didn't get anything after nearly six months of delay on this budget. So we kept going through this over and over again, like Groundhog Day, and then we reach it, and now we had two minibuses, and this last one that passed... Uh, there was actually some little bit of nervousness on the House side of whether it would pass, because as you noted, more than 100 Republicans didn't vote for mm -hmm. it. But I think this is where we are right now. So, Jeff, over at the White House, the, the press secretary said something this week along the lines of get your popcorn mm -hmm. out and, you know, watch it. So, you know, it's not good governance. It's probably not good for the country. But is this useful politics-wise for the White House to say, look, this is what you get when you have a Republican majority who is in the midst of a civil war with itself. Yeah, I think that's a good question. It might be useful uh, politically. It gives the White House an ability to say that the Republicans, when they're given leadership in Congress, they, they have control of the House right now, aren't able to govern effectively or efficiently. On the other hand, the Democrats ended up helping them out, which is, uh, you know, if, if politically you might have said, just let them, just let them flip. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, this was just to fund the government. This mm -hmm. was not a special priorities for either side. This is just to keep the lights on and to keep the agencies running until September of next year. It shouldn't necessarily be celebrated as this huge accomplishment. Mm -hmm. But because of the dysfunction in Congress and because of these tight, tight, um, the tight majority yeah. for the Republican side, it's a big deal. And you, you're paying your bills. Everybody has to pay their bills. Yes. Uh, we saw in this package, though, Mitchell, there was no aid to Ukraine. There's no aid to Israel. Now, sometimes, you know, events of the day overtake the larger umbrella issues. And Israel seems to be kind of falling into that pocket right now. Because while, you know, this has gone on, this war in Gaza since October, of late, there clearly seems to be a big divide building up between the White House and Benjamin Netanyahu over the way forward here right now. Netanyahu has made it clear that a ground invasion is on the way in Gaza. How much weighs on getting that Israeli aid package out before more public opinion starts turning on this subject? Well, I think it's going to be a big issue over the next few weeks. You have House Speaker Johnson inviting Netanyahu to speak to Congress. Uh, you have Chuck Schumer on the Senate side criticizing Netanyahu very sharply, although he did say he would be okay with Netanyahu addressing Congress. But you have... The House has already passed an Israeli aid package, but then it was rejected because it didn't uh, include Ukraine. But 
Ukraine and Israel, I think, are going to be somehow inextricably tied together, politically at least, while uh, the House Republicans would like to just take Israel first, I think down the road Ukraine is going to be a looming issue as well. Over the last 72 hours, there was a meeting between Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Benjamin Netanyahu. All reports, Jeff, say that that did not go well that Blinken warned Netanyahu that he risks losing U.S. support in greater numbers if you proceed for this. They've been trying to kind of work out some deal on a ceasefire in exchange for hostages. There's a team headed to Washington right now. Is the White House banking on being able to get some kind of agreement out of them now? Because it seems like this relationship with Netanyahu has been going downhill rapidly. I don't think they're banking on anything, and I think you're absolutely right that that relationship has been going downhill. The president, of course, is still a big supporter of Israel, but he's been very disappointed with the way that Israel has conducted this war. You're right to say that they've been warning Netanyahu against the ground invasion in Rafah, mm -hmm. which is the part of Gaza where over a million Palestinians have essentially taken refuge during this war. The talks that are about to happen in Washington, the talks that happen in Israel, are not showing a great deal of po progress. And they've been working to get this six-week ceasefire for weeks, mm -hmm. and it just hasn't happened. I want to talk about Russia, because obviously we have all by now seen this horrific video of this attack in a concert hall. Um, innocent people, 133 that we know of right now, are dead in that. That number is likely to go up, according to the governor of the uh, Moscow region. Uh, and Mitchell, you know, we have lived in, in an era since 2001 that we're aware of the possibility of terrorist attack. But the United States did warn Russia of late that this was a possibility. Um, Putin's just coming off of this election that a lot of people had cast doubt on as to you know, whether or not you know, that level of support. Could even Vladimir Putin, as we saw happened in the aftermath of the attack on Israel, ha suffer a political loss on this as well? Because he is viewed as this strong man, as this guy who was impenetrable. And despite the U.S. warning Russia of this, this attack still happens. Well, I think this shows that certain things Putin can't control entirely. And we've seen that in the past year or so. There have been these little chinks in his armor, but he always seems to reorganize, as you know, and is able to get everything firmly under control. It is interesting, not surprising, that he is throwing shade on Ukraine related to this. And I think this is all part of his political effort to show that he is in control. All right. We appreciate both of you taking time out of your Sunday morning and joining us. Uh, Jeff Mason, Mitch Miller, uh, uh, Mitchell Miller, we uh, we'll always love having you here. We're going to have you back on the desk real soon. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. All right.